In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold the origami tessellation called Trifilia, discovered by Robin Scholz. For more of his absolutely fantastic work, check out his Flickr stream. Now, in this video, I use a hexagonal sheet of paper with a height of 18 centimeters or 7 and an eighth of an inch, or if you like, with a side length of 10 and a half centimeters or 4 and an eighth of an inch. The finished tessellation then has a height of 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches and a side length of 5.25 centimeters or 2 and a sixteenth of an inch. Now, of course, you can fold this tessellation from a square to adding a triangle grid, but in this video, I'll show a technique where you will actually get a nice hexagonal shape in the end again. If you don't know how to get a hexagon, I have a video that describes how to get one from a rectangle or a square, so do check that out. Now, before you fold your usual grid, stop. Because usually you'd fold a grid folding edge to edge, but we're not going to do that. We're going to fold point to point. And also, it does matter which direction you crease first, especially with tessellations. So if you want a colored tessellation seen from this side rather than the back, and you want the grid to be not quite as obvious, then you fold the valley folds on the color side. So fold point to point and not edge to edge. And for one iteration of this tessellation pattern, we need a 16 division grid now. So we need to fold that first. And especially if you're using heavy paper like elephant hide, then always reverse your creases to get them nice and strong and so that they don't have a real direction anymore. So it doesn't really feel like a valley fold or a mountain fold. And once you have that, you continue folding the grid, always using the points and not the edges. So go ahead and fold your 16 division grid now. Now, once you have your 16 division grid done, so that, you know, if you look at one of these directions, there will be 16 rows. Now we have to fill the whole sheet with triangle twists. And it is very important how you place the very first one. And after that, you don't have to worry. So on one edge, we're going to go with exactly the center so that this edge is divided into half. And then on the second one, we're going to find the halfway point and then go one, two grid lines away from it. And then we will have this meeting point and that will meet right here. And if you count, you can again see that you're two away from the center. Now I'm describing it in this way in case you're using a larger grid, for example, a 32 division grid. So you always count from the center and then two out. And then you can twist it in either direction, but just so that we have the same direction, I'm going to go counterclockwise. So you can see this is going counterclockwise. And then we're going to just push these down. And I think I went a bit too quickly here. I'll show again in some detail, just a second. I'll zoom in. This is the first triangle twist done and I'll show you how to place the next one in detail and also how to perform really nice triangle twists. So you can see here you have these pleats, these mountain folds, and you're going to leave one of these edges of the small triangles from the grid just like that and then that is going to be the meeting point for the next uh, three creases that form the triangle twist. So I'm going to go in here to make them pop up. So I play, I found this point and then it was clear that I'd have always two triangles in between. And now because for the first one I rotated counterclockwise, this time I'm going to rotate clockwise. So I'm going to take this pleat and push it over in a clockwise fashion 
and same on the second one and the third one. And you really don't have a choice because this one needs to lie flat. So if you're ever unsure how to rotate, just check how the other triangle twists suggest you continue working. So then we've got these pushed down and you can see these corners here and there. This is exactly where the grid forms, where there's these intersections. And just a bit after that, I place my hands and then I apply pressure and it's going to start popping up. And once you're almost there, now you want to push on the corners so that you get really nice, precise tips. So you first do the tips and then you flatten all of these new creases. And then you continue with the next one. So you have one pleat here, you open it up, leaving one edge of a triangle untouched. And then you're going to go counterclockwise again, because this triangle needs to lie flat, so you need to go in that direction. And then push open, finish the tips, and flatten. And I'll zoom out and continue. Now, I like to place my triangle roots so that I first form a ring in the center. So I just proceed always going ahead with the next one. And sometimes you may just simply have these pleats that you fold and treat them as if they were a single layer of paper. And then always use that same technique to get a very nice precise triangle twist. Every once in a while you will have to then open these pleats here, can you see, so that you can freely work with the paper. Essentially these mountain folds you form should usually have um, just a single layer when you really work with them. So just flattening this out a bit, just ensure that these don't unfold too much so that you don't get in trouble. And then you again follow that pattern and back here you can either do them at the same time, some people prefer that, but I think it's easier if you just ignore this one for now, just flattening it down and then adding that triangle twist. And then you can open this up and you've got your next triangle twist all prepared. So now you can see that you placed the triangle twists so that there's one ring exactly in the center. And this ensures that we get a nice finish in the end. And now you can continue to fill the whole space with triangle twists. Or if you actually like, you could also add a different border because it's just these triangle twists that are required for one of those triangles right here. So you can see now we're adding these triangle twists as a border. Or, of course, if you're using a larger grid, a continuation of further of these triangles. So then go ahead and fill the whole space and there's different orders in which you can add these and just go ahead with whatever you like. I like to make these two stars to then open up this tip right there and then collapse the two in between. But you might want to go a different way and if you ever see that there's a bit of imprecision, simply fix it as you go along. Especially the ones on the very border are a bit more difficult to get precise, but with practice it will work out just fine. Now you fill the whole space with triangle twists. This is what it looks like from the back. And this is also the starting point for the Star Puff by Ralph Conrad. So you could go ahead and finish it that way. 
but we're folding the triphelia, right? So we're going to take the center and fold this out and make a strong crease because now we're going to make a closed sink. So for this I suggest you start very similar to the star puff if you know it by pressing in to have this puff up a bit and then press this through to the other side so that this pyramid shape goes through. So I'm just pushing here and showing you from the other side looks a bit messy at first. Can you see that's almost pushed through here? And then you can straighten this out to make it nice and tidy, especially with tessellations. I think precision makes such a big difference. And then you continue with the next one. Puffing it up to start the closed sink and then pushing through and neatening up that closed sink. So one more time. This time it's here. Open it up a bit and then I'll try to show you just from the back. Push through that point and clean it up. So in the front you can see this larger triangle appearing. But we're not quite done. To get a nice backlighting effect we're now going to make some squashes here to remove these layers of paper. So we're going to go along a grid line here and this is very important. So we're going to really ensure we're going along that line and lift this paper up and then make a squash, a spread squash, so that the corners lie on this extra layer of paper. So you were really going as far as you can, always ensuring you're going along that crease and then pushing down to add a new mountain fold here so you're not going along the grid there. And this is very important to get it just right and to get as much paper out of the way as possible. And then you flatten it and here you should have a rectangular shape or very close to a rectangular shape. And I'll show you again. Always ensure you're going along the grid line here, pushing up the paper, ensuring you're going all the way here as far as you can and making a new mountain fold here to make a spread squash in a rectangular shape. And one final time, lift up and then make that spread squash complete, flattening down the paper. And then your triphelia is all done. As you can see here, we remove this paper so that you can very nicely see those striking triangles and especially when applying backlighting, it looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you are up for a challenge, you can use this in other tessellation patterns or simply extend the pattern by working on a 32 division grid. So then, rather than just having one of these larger triangles, you can add a second ring and doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous too? And if you enjoyed this tessellation, how about you try out the Celtic Circle tessellation, also discovered by Robin Scholz? Or try folding the Star Puff, designed by Ralph Conrad, either as I did in the video or on this rotated triangle grid to get that nice hexagonal shape. I've also got a playlist of origami tessellations, which you may enjoy. And if you liked this video, why don't you let me know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. And finally, do check out my website happyfolding.com for more origami content. I hope to see you around and happy folding!